Get gold. Canoe slalom, roughly 90 to 100 second course, big white water, six upstream gates, so you do in the eddies in an upstream fashion, 18 gates in total, top to bottom as fast as you can. So you only get one run at the course um, with no practice, so you, all your preparation has to be done from the bank. So from the bank we'll see there's big white water, big stoppers that if you hit straight on will slow the boat down. So we're looking for the line that will take as little boat speed off and keep the boat running as fast as possible. And you're thinking ahead to what you need to do to be in the right position two or three gates in advance. So you may be swinging out wide to take some speed back so you can get across the river ready for the next downstream gate. The upstreams, I think for a lot of people, um, are where the, the race is won or lost really. You've got the biggest potential for loss of time because you have to go upstream, paddle against the flow. It's very easy to lose the, the boat speed there, easier than, than it is on the green gates going downstream. The only thing that makes a difference other than your pure raw speed is if you hit one of the poles. If you hit a gate, then that's a two second penalty added onto your time. So each time you touch a gate, a different gate, a two second penalty is added. And um, the biggest penalty that can be awarded is a 50 second penalty. If, you're, if you negotiate a gate incorrectly or miss a gate completely, then 50 seconds added to your time which almost always is game over for the race race. Sometimes if it's a final of a championship race and you've made a mistake early in the run, you've almost got nothing to lose and you may as well try and make that time back. Because if you know, you've, you know you're not going to come in the top five or something like that out of the top ten final from your earlier mistakes, you may, you, maybe you should try and risk it. So you've kind of got to weigh these things up in the run, which is pretty tricky to like process that information and come out with a rational decision. Usually the best plan of action is to stick to your plan, regardless. The two main categories of boat are kayak, where you sit in the boat with your legs in front of you and you have a double bladed paddle, and a canoe where you kneel in the boat and you have a single bladed paddle. Um, and then you also have the uh, C2 event, the double canoe, where you have two people kneeling with single paddles. The, the men compete in all those classes, so kayak, C1, which is single canoe, and C2, the double canoe. Um, the women's event, uh, the Olympic disciplines, uh, only women's kayak. There's no C1 event or C2 event for the women at the moment. In normal internationals now, now they've um, just started the women's C1 event, um, but that's yet to be made an Olympic discipline. It is quite hard in many ways. Like I'm a lefty in C1, so I forget after my right blade in kayak, and sometimes I come out of an up and do like those left strokes. I don't focus on kayak, but I put almost a lot more effort into kayak. The C1's like as long as I get the lines right, especially on this course with the flow of the water, as long as I get the lines right, I'll be fine. The kayaks are normally the fastest down the course at a competition, but the bigger the white water it tends to bring the times closer together with the C1 class. One of the main differences is because in a C1 you kneel and all your weight is central, it makes the boat really easy to turn and makes the bow very light so you can um, do incredible things on stoppers because you're a bit more cork-like, a bit more buoyant. Whereas in a kayak you've got a lot more weight in front of you but you also have a double paddle so you can get blades into the water a little bit faster and generally in a straight line make the boat move faster. 
Yeah, making a slalom C1 go where you want to go is actually pretty difficult when you first start. There's a, a huge amount of, of subtleties of, of tiny little boat leans and boat edging and um, also you know the exact direction you're pulling your paddle in. It takes it takes a, a very long time to actually actually master it, but um, when you do, you, you're, it's amazing how how well you can get the boat to go in a, a set direction with a lot of power, even though you're only paddling on one side. The C2 again uh, brings into an element of coordination and teamwork between, so it becomes even more difficult. And you've got two people to get through every gate that's still the same width and the same size, so that's much more of a challenge. So much of it's a joint responsibility, even really subtly, you know, it might be the other person's stroke, but you could do things to help that work, or you could do things that could actually stop it working. So um, I'll do more turning when it's going to the right, and Etienne will do more turning when it's going to the left, but we're both helping that happen, and on the white water, it's, it's got to be like that here. And an interesting thing I think is, is that being sitting behind, I can't see the water that we're immediately about to negotiate. So Tim is uh, kind of the eyes and ears of the, of the boat and I suppose I try to, you know, understand and see what he is seeing. Canoe slalom can take place in so many different venues. Um, at the lowest level, just on flat water lakes, uh, hang a, a course over the, the lake progressing up to being on rivers where the, the water's moving but you've got no white water. And then right up to the, the most modern Olympic course like you have at the Lee Valley White Water Centre where you've got a man-made concrete channel with movable obstacles and the water's pumped to the top and then runs down. Water for Lee Valley White Water Centre comes from an aquifer about a quarter of a mile over there. The water comes in, is filtered, treated, and um, is then goes into a holding lake, which is a size of about two football pitches. We have five enormous pumps which power the water up five and a half metres to the top of the Olympic Standard Competition course, which then flows down at a rate of 13,000 litres a second, which is an enormous amount of water, enough to fill 75 bathtubs every single second. The actual channels can be changed frequently by the use of rapid blocks which are like giant Lego bricks on tracks which can just be pumped up and linked together to alter the flow of the water and create new features. Canoeists and rafters also have got the luxury of just paddling onto the very bottom of a conveyor belt which slowly takes them up to the top of the start pool, pops them out and then off they go down the course. It's a fantastic race site, you know, it's, it really is. It's, it's big impressive water and it's a uh, it's fun place to race. The fact that we've got this venue at home means that there's not that pressure to travel through into Europe through the season so we can really prepare for our major championships from home I think is a real strength for us now and the international people want to come here whereas we've always been joining their sites. The Germans for instance they have a race in Augsburg every year and we're the talking point now and I think that's something that's really good. Man-made courses have brought a brilliant consistency to canoe slalom, I guess, because something with natural rivers, you don't know what the level's going to be like. The level can change at any given time, during the race even, and can be quite frustrating. Whereas man-made course where the water's pumped and regulated, you know that the flow will be there and you can have it for whatever time of day you like. And then you've only got the weather conditions to take into account. International competitions interesting in the fact that one of the factors that makes the most successful paddlers really successful is that they're able to take an environment that is inherently hugely variable and make it possible to bring a, like, such a high level of consistency to it. It's just the num sheer number of people that are very, very quick. Uh, it just makes everything so, so tight and you know that you know, you have to be tight around those poles and you, you have to be quick between the gates and there's just no margin for error really. And you just have to adapt to it, you know, you can't, you can't let it uh, bother you at all. You just got to make a plan for the conditions. You aim to get those results, you aim to medal at the big races, but you know, you still want to be the best at your game and to be consistently up there is what you really strive to, to do. 
it doesn't always go your way, especially on such a difficult course. It's so difficult, and you have a, 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 the slightest error, and you're completely offline, and and and, and that race is, is gone. And then you know, a weekend doesn't go your way, but you always know it's it's it goes through three races, and it goes right down to the last run. And we saw it today again, and and some. When they're a bit angry, they even paddle better and it brings the best out of people. Something that I most love about canoe slalom is the variability that you have. Every day in training is different, you know. It's it's fun to be on white water paddling and to try and perfect something to go down a white water course that is difficult just to paddle down um, through a gate sequence as fast as you can. The, the course is different every time you come to it. The moves are different every time you come to it. Um, and it just makes it so enjoyable to go and do every day. Yeah.